Yo, what's good everyone? It's your boy in my old room I used to do videos in. Shout out to the OGs that remember this room. Today's video is gonna be something totally new. Take a little break from pendulums for the other members of the Triff Nation that like other decks such as Salamangre. So if you're ready for the spiciest Salamangre deck profile, it's completely different than how it's played normally. And it's a good deck, but I think if played this way, it's a lot... Uh, a lot more superior than the other version that a uh, typical salamangrates. Throughout the video, two of my friends were bothering the cameraman, literally pointing to his ear or making random noises or whatever. So if you hear random noises or me randomly just laughing, just ignore it and enjoy the video. So if you're ready for the video, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, and let's go straight into the video. Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy. I told you before, salamangrates trash. And you know what? It's not as trash as I thought it was. It's okay. Through the right build and proper deck building and proper player, it can actually do a lot. And this is the spiciest list you will ever see. There are literally zero extenders in the deck. Uh, I think extenders suck in Salamangre. I don't think it's as good as people say it is. In fact, Gazelle is also overrated in Salamangre. You don't need to hope to see Gazelle or lose. So we played the deck completely different. You're going to see the spiciest list you've ever seen for this deck. And you know what? It utilizes the best Salamangrate trap in the game, and it's not Rage, and it's not Roar. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. So you have six Gazelles. Seeing it's great, but it's not the end goal. You don't lose if you don't see Gazelle. In fact, I'm perfectly content with going Bailing's Pass and winning through the main part of the deck, which is the 20 hand traps that you play, and the Infinity cards you use to draw it. So these are great to, draw, great to see, but if you don't, it doesn't matter. Next, three Foxy, also equally as amazing. I'm perfectly content with going Foxy, plus one, Bailinx, plus one, four hand traps, three hand traps, pass. I'm totally okay with that. It's the whole part of the deck. Next, two Spinny, one Jaguar, one Falco. This is the other monsters in this deck. These are the other Salamangre monsters in the deck. So you want to play as little, minimal Salamangre engine as possible. Minimal, minimal, minimal. You don't want to see a hand of Salamangres. You want to see a hand of one or two or maximum three. You want to see all hand traps or all draw cards or good cards, which is essentially the rest of the deck, just good cards. Why did Trickstar actually do some damage? Well, it didn't. Why did Strikers do some damage back then or hand trap draw decks do damage back then? They didn't win or Trickstar didn't win worlds because of the engine. It won because of the hand traps. Not even Yeah, but when I get unbanned, they will. And uh, believe me, and you play three desires as well, which I'll get into it. Why you play with some one ofs? Well, I'll talk about desires later. Now, next is Salamangre spells have traps that aren't circle. That aren't circle. One sanctuary, obviously one rage, yeah, one roar, yeah. But rage or roar are not the best traps in the deck. Built like this, normally fine, they're the best. But built when the whole deck over here is all hand traps, the best trap card in the in Salamangre is Salamangre Gift. Now, none of you know what Salamangre Gift does. What it does is this: discard one card, draw two. Discard a Salamangre, draw two, and it's a continuous trap. Hence, when it stays on the field, on if your opponent can't clear it on their turn, you draw two again on your turn. So you draw two on their turn, you draw two on your turn, and you draw two again on their turn. So you end up drawing six. If they don't kill it on your on their turn, you auto win. But you have to have Salamangre cards to discard, right? Yeah, which you're gonna have because. How many Salamangre monsters do you play? You play 9 draw 2 cards. And 15 Salamangre, just something along those lines. Oh, so okay. since you, now, when you draw into the Salamangre cards, with these 9 draw 2 cards, with the Foxy that's going to get you some useless Salamangre card you don't want, or these all the Salamangre cards you're going to have anyways, you're always going to have useless Salamangre cards you don't want. Now you have some use for it. You discard the useless ones. You discard what the fuck? Okay, you discard the useless ones, and you actually have use for it. And worst case scenario, if you don't have a Link Summon uh, Reincarnated Salamangre, worst case scenario, <laughs> worst case scenario, you can send one from deck to grave and draw one as well. So it's actually amazing. And because you play 17 hand traps with 9 draw cards, which I'll show you more I'm talking about it, they have so much power, it's unbelievable. Because you end up having hand traps of 3 or 4 always. So now the draw cards are these 6. As well as the three Phantasmi. So you have nine cards that say draw two. So since you have nine cards that say draw two, you draw Gazelle a lot more than you think. 
So even though you don't have extenders, you end up drying the gazelle more than normal because of the extenders, but also because of these. So you don't need extenders, but on top of that, you also draw the hand traps, which is really the whole part, part of the deck. Whole new game plan. Next, all the hand traps. You play 17. So for the hand traps now, you play three Phantasmi. So three Phantasmi. Bro, the video is going to have like some random whispers in it. Like, what the fuck? Okay, three of these. Next, the best, the new best hand trap in the game, Nibiru. Obviously, versus non com versus non combo decks. Obviously, you're gonna take out the Nibiru, but you only play two. Now, there's a theory with hand with my hand traps. A theory that you should not play more than three, uh, more than two of any hand trap that you can only play one up per turn. So even though Ash is great that you could add it back, it's gonna be useless if you draw two Ashes. So you only want one of each of these. So as you see, there's only one of each of these that you only you can only play one of these per turn. So even though they're good hand traps, all in all. They're the best hand traps in the game that they say hard ones per turn. You only play one of them anyway, so you you don't want to see. Two of each. You're right, but you it, that's said one of each. You're right because you'll only see if you see three, you could draw two of them. It doesn't sound like trip math. But if you see trip math, it works. And also one crow because I didn't want to add three of any of these, even uh, even droll or ash because they're good or ash is good in salamangre. But crow, I didn't want to see two of any of them, so I just added the crow as well, which also works really good this format. And lastly, three Valor because you can play two Valor if you want on the turn. I don't play in permanence because it, it kind of does the same thing as Valor, even though all six are great in against any matchup. You don't want to see three Valors or two Imperm, one Valor, whatever. And Valor, I believe, is better than impermanence against, in Salamangre because they're going to side Denko against you. So Valor actually has some use in that sense. Also, it somewhat conflicts, but not really with Phantasme. So I opted not to. It's 40 cards and 17 hand traps, nine draw two cards. It's absolutely, absolutely it's actually really, really good. Now in terms of the extra deck, Baylinx, uh, in extender version, I don't think you need to play three, but in this version, you end up going on Baylinx pass with four hand traps uh, more than you want. But it, believe me, three is fine. And believe me, Baylinx, reincarnate Baylinx, four hand traps is still auto win. Or four hand traps is still auto win. Because you're one Salamangre away from just absolutely winning. And the second Salamangre gift setups get set up, you auto win. Three, Wolf, two, Leo. To Stalio, uh, it's more of a grind game with, like this, that's why you need a little more of the engine. One Dweller, one Hida, one Phoenix, and then uh, it is a grind engine and you really don't need anything else. So what I opted was both Boral Lord and Boral Sword, because you could opt for, you go over OTK in different situations, and I didn't opt to play the Link 2 uh, with Boral Lord, I just thought I didn't need to. And Boral Lord and Nibiru taking a token is funny. Uh, now, uh, the side deck. As you notice, there's a lot of hand traps, so this so the main deck is not very good versus the mirror or versus Stri Sky Striker. So, or other trap decks. So since you have all these hand traps that are bad versus all those decks, the whole side deck's built to take out these 17 to uh, be, auto win against those decks. So against the mirror, you literally auto win against the mirror after siding because you have three super polys and three fusion of fire. I don't care what anyone says. This is absolutely mandatory to play in the mirror. It's just an auto win. You go second in the mirror, draw one of the six, and you just auto win. Literally auto win. If you draw. Also, super poly against combo decks, you got the Starving Venom. And then uh, Sky Striker is the other matchup which is bad against with the main deck because you have 17 hand traps. And the hand traps is good against Kagari and stuff, whatever, but it's a good control that I, like, hand traps aren't that good against them. So what I do instead is I side these six. So... In pure order, an anti-spell is an auto-win against that deck. And while Brisk Pendulum the best deck, you want more stuff. So anti-spell for it, but mainly for the Striker engine, which the main deck is just generically bad against. With Twister as well, which is generically good because you have a lot of great effects. So that's the deck. I'm going to go before someone rapes the cameraman. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. So the man grades are a lot better than I give it out to be. And believe me, if you play this list, try it out. I'll leave a download link in the description below. You will win a lot more than you will that you could possibly imagine with Salamander great normally. Hit the subscribe button, we'll see you in the next video, peace. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm telling you guys right now, when you use this logic, I'm about to tell you, it'll really help you out with Yu-Gi-Oh. You gotta understand that if you're not the best player in the world and you're playing the exact same deck list as the best player in the world, what makes you think that you're gonna beat the best player in the world if you're not the best player in the world? Does that make sense? Hence, you need to be smart in terms of your deck building because your deck building is really what's gonna separate you from everyone else at different events. And you guys have kind of the greatest resource and deck builder in the planet right here to help you guys out win your game. So if you use my pendulum lists, if you use my Salamangre list and just don't misplay with it, 
you have the best chance of winning. Obviously, you know, as much as it is a game of skill, it is still a lot of a luck involved in it, but it would give you the most chance of winning utilizing the best list, and that's consistently what I give you guys. Uh, and for no other reason other than helping you guys out with your list, I would love to keep my list to myself, but I made a pact to always value my YouTube over my personal uh, Yu-Gi-Oh growth. So you guys, use my list and you're gonna be winning your games. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button if you like what you see. Smash the like button and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.